The Woman and Me by Britney Spears. Chapter 11. There was hardly any time to rehearse. I only had a week to get ready. I was performing at the 2001 Super Bowl halftime show alongside Aerosmith, Mary J. Blige, Nelly, and NSYNC. Justin and the rest of his band had special gloves that shot fountains of sparks. I sank, walked this way, wearing a sexy version of a football uniform with shiny silver pants and a crop shirt and an athletic sock on one of my arms. I was brought to Steven Tyler's trailer to meet him right before the show, and his energy was incredible. He was such an idol to me. When we finished, the stadium lit up with fireworks. The halftime show was just one of the seemingly endless good things happening for me. I landed, quote unquote, the most powerful woman spot on Forbes list of the most powerful celebrities. The following year, I'd be number one overall. I learned that tabloids were making so much money off photos of me. I was almost single-handedly keeping some magazines in business, and I was starting to get amazing offers. At the 2001 MTV Video Music Awards that September, the plan was for me to sing I'm a Slave for You, and we decided I would use a snake as a prop. It's become an iconic moment in VMA's history, but it was even more terrifying than it appeared. The first time I saw the snake was when they brought it to a little back room of the Metropolitan Opera House in Manhattan, where we would be doing the show. The girl who handed it over was even smaller than me. She looked so young, and she was very tiny, with blonde hair. I couldn't believe they didn't have some big guy in charge. I remember thinking, you're letting us two little munchkins handle this huge snake? But there we were, and there was no going back. She lifted up the snake and put it over my head and around me. To be honest, I was a little scared. That snake was a huge animal, yellow and white, crinkly, gross looking. It was okay because the girl who gave it to me was right there, plus a snake handler and a bunch of other people. Everything changed, though, when I actually had to do the song on stage with the snake. On stage, I'm in performance mode. I'm in costume, and there's nobody else there but me. Once again, the little munchkin came to me and handed me that huge snake. And all I knew was to look down, because I felt if I looked up and caught its eye, <laughs> that it would kill me. In my head, I was saying, just perform, just use your legs and perform. But what nobody knows, that as I was singing, the snake brought its head right around to my face, right up to me, and started hissing at me. You didn't see that shot on the TV, but in real life, I was thinking, are you fucking serious right now? The fucking goddamn snake's tongue is flicking out at me right now? Finally, I got to the part where I handed it back. Thank God. The next night, at Madison Square Garden in New York City, just days before September 11th, I performed a duet of The Way You Make Me Feel with Michael Jackson to celebrate the 13th anniversary of his solo career. In my heels, I prowled all over that stage. The audience went crazy. At one point, it felt like the whole crowd of 20,000 was singing along with us. Pepsi hired me to do commercials for them and in the joy of Pepsi, I started out as a delivery driver and then wound up in a huge dance number. And now and then I got to wear cute outfits 
from various eras. For the 80s section, I got made up as Robert Palmer for a version of Simply Irresistible. I was in hair and makeup for four hours, and they still didn't quite manage to make me convincing as a man. But in the 50s part, I loved dancing in the drive-in. I had Betty Boop hair, working in all those different genres. I was amazed at how intelligently done those commercials were. The first movie I did was Crossroads, written by Shonda Rhimes and directed by Tamara Davis. We had filmed it in March 2001, around the same time I was recording the album Britney. In the film, I was playing the good girl named Lucy Wagner. The experience wasn't easy for me. My problem wasn't with anyone involved in the production, but with what acting did to my mind. I think I started method acting, only I didn't know how to break out of my character. I really became this other person. Some people do method acting, but they're usually aware of the fact they're doing it. But I didn't have any separation at all. This is embarrassing to say, but it's like a cloud or something came over me, and I just became this girl named Lucy. When the camera came on, I was her. And then I couldn't tell the difference between when the camera was on and when it wasn't. I know that seems stupid, but it's the truth. I took it that seriously. I took it seriously to the point where Justin said, Why are you walking like that? Who are you? All I can say, it's a good thing Lucy was a sweet girl writing poems about how she was not a girl, not yet a woman, and not a serial killer. I ended up walking differently, carrying myself differently, talking differently. I was someone else for months while I filmed Crossroads. Still to this day, I bet the girls I shot that movie with think she's a little quirky. If they thought that, they were right. I was a baby, just like the character. I should have played myself on camera, but I was so eager to do a good job that I kept trying to go deep with this character. I had been me my whole life, and I wanted to try something different. I should have said to myself, it's a teen road movie. It's not that deep. Honestly, just have a good time. After the movie wrapped, one of my girlfriends from a club in L.A. came to visit me. We went to CVS. I swear to God, I walked into that store. And as I talked to her while we shopped, I finally came back to myself. When I came outside again, I was cured of the spell that movie had cast. It was so strange. My little spirit showed back up in my body. That trip to buy makeup with a friend was like waving some magic wand. Then I was pissed. I thought, oh my God, what have I been doing for the past few months? Who was I? That was pretty much the beginning of the end of my acting career. And I was relieved. The notebook casting came down to me and Rachel McAdams. And even though it would have been fun to reconnect with Ryan Gosling after our time on the Mickey Mouse Club, I'm glad I didn't do it. If I had, instead of working on my album, In the Zone, I'd have been acting like a 1940s heiress day and night. I'm sure a lot of the problem was that it was my first experience with acting. I imagine there are people in the acting field who have dealt with something like that, where they had trouble separating themselves from a character. But I feel like they keep perspective. I hope I never get close to that occupational hazard again. Living that way, being half yourself and half a fictional character, 
is messed up. After a while, you don't know what's real anymore. 